today we are working on a 1985 club car. This is the model that has the micro switch box and the solenoids with resistors to control the motor speed. In this video, we'll be showing you how to diagnose your solenoids and your micro switches to enable you to determine which speeds are being affected by either the micro switch or the solenoid being defective. To do this job, you're going to need a voltmeter. And it also helps because most voltmeters don't have alligator clips on the prongs. We have these little test wires that have an alligator clip on both ends. And that way we can attach it to the prong on the voltmeter and then be able to touch the alligator clip or connect it to one of the solenoids as we're testing. As you push the pedal down, the micro switches, which are contained in this box down here, will actually engage one after another based on the amount of pedal that you press down into it. As the micro switch engages, then each of these solenoids will begin engaging in a series, which are hooked up to these resistors which will feed a certain voltage to the motor to make it go slower or faster. As we push the pedal down we're going to expect that the power coming to the solenoids will go incrementally as we go up the ladder here. The way this system is designed with the five solenoids, the first solenoid actually turns on the system and does not engage the motor. As you begin to push the pedal down you'll hear the first click but the cart doesn't go. Now the first solenoid is engaged and as you hear the second click, the cart will begin to move. If the first solenoid goes bad, then none of the other ones are actually gonna engage the cart. So the first one is primary to making all the speeds work. The second four are primary to making each individual speed work. In our situation on this cart, the only speed that we had was full speed. There was no slow speeds, which was indicating that this particular solenoid right here was the last one that was still working. First thing we've done is we've taken all the nuts off of this bar across the top of these solenoid switches and we'll go ahead and lift this bar off of here and effectively this kind of disconnects the motor from the solenoids and now we can actually still do some of our tests but we don't have to worry about the car jumping forward and everything like that. So watch right now if I push the accelerator all the way down you can hear one click back here. Okay I've hooked up my voltmeter to both sides of the solenoid that it's the only one that's clicking right now. And so as I push the gas pedal down, now over here you can see that when it clicks, my voltmeter registers the power coming in. So with that said, let's go and test all five of these and we'll see which ones are actually getting power from the micro switch, which would tell us that the solenoid is bad and which ones are not getting power from the micro switch, which would tell us the micro switch is bad. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're gonna pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair, what's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life, have you ever told a lie before? I have, and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something, even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have, and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible, which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell, or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth, he didn't lie, he didn't steal, he didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin, he was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave, three days later he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. Since we had power on this one, now let's go to this next one. We'll check it. As I begin to press the pedal down, you can see I get the power when I get close to the full throttle. Not quite full throttle. Now I'll go ahead and finish pushing full throttle and we'll get the click on that last solenoid. So that tells me that this solenoid in the number four position is bad. Now let's check the third one. Now with the third one hooked up, as I begin pressing the pedal, 
I'm not getting any reading on my voltmeter. I'm getting close to the floor and click, we just went wide open. That tells me that the micro switch on position number three is actually bad. Now let's do the same thing for position number two. As I begin pressing the pedal, I'm just a little bit right now, and all of a sudden I'm about half throttle on the pedal. I've got my voltmeter picking up the power. The solenoid did not click, but that tells me that the solenoid is bad. Before starting to take the resistors and the solenoids off, we're going to go ahead and take the lead off of the battery bank so that we don't have any shorts down there and cause any fires. The solenoids are basically held on with a bolt on either side of it, which is 7 16 in size. We'll take those out. It's a little hard to get to the nut that's holding the back side of this solenoid to the frame, but by taking the bracket for the resistor off first, you can actually slide it sideways enough to be able to get your ratchet down on that rear nut. The solenoid is nothing more than an electric switch. The two small leads actually engage the switch. One of these leads is fed by the micro switch, and the other is just a common. The two big leads are fed from the battery to the electric motor. One of the big thick wires comes into the solenoid from the battery, and the other goes out of the solenoid to the motor. There's two issues that can go bad on a solenoid. If the voltage going to the two small terminals will not make the solenoid click, then the electric magnet inside the solenoid has been defective, and it's not engaging. Sometimes the electric magnet can still be working, However, the contacts inside the solenoid on the big terminals are scored or burnt. And when the solenoid clicks, even though it engages, you won't get power crossing across the two big terminals. Or sometimes you'll get intermediate power where you'll have power one time and then it'll click again and then no power, no power, and click again, it has power. So if it's not consistent, then the solenoid needs to be replaced. Let me show you one that's doing that. Okay, on this test, I actually have the voltmeter hooked up to the terminal on the solenoid. It comes into the voltmeter, and then I have it hooked up over here to the battery. So in this particular solenoid, as I push the pedal down, you'll hear it click, but I don't get any power on the voltmeter. Or I get irregular power. I get about, there's one. So basically that solenoid has got some scoring on it, and that one needs to be replaced also. So now you can see what the new solenoid put in. We have the same wires hooked up to the voltmeter, and now it's very consistent. Every time it clicks, you get the voltage. Now as you push the pedal down, you hear all five solenoids kick in. The next test I'm going to show you that you can do, we have a test wire hooked up to the positive side of the battery bank, and as we begin to push the pedal down and get the first click, now we can go through and independently touch a gator clip to the left side of the solenoids, which is the terminal that does not have this wire that loops from solenoid to solenoid like that. And every time we touch one of these, it should engage the next speed. We've actually jacked the cart up off the ground, so that way when we engage the motor, it actually spins the wheels, but the cart won't move. So now I'll go ahead and push the pedal down, and I'll engage the first solenoid. Now I can come and touch the terminal, and we'll get the low speed. You can hear the tires running. We'll come over to the next one, we'll touch, and we'll get the medium speed. We'll come to the next one, and this should be close to high. Then we'll touch the last one, this will be full blast. So through that, we actually determined that all of the contacts in the solenoids are all good. And we also know that the magnetic plunger magnets in each one is also good. For a detailed explanation of how to replace your micro switches, you want to see our other video entitled Club Car, How to Replace Your Micro Switches. In some situations, your problems may be related to the slider bar inside the micro switch box, in which case you might, you might want to take a look at our other video entitled Club Car, How to Repair Your Micro Switch Box Slider. Hey, as far as the internal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real and you are out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it, and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real, and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. 
I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.